QuickBooks Online 2024, Save Customization, otherwise known as Memorize Report. Get ready and some coffee because QuickBooks is even quicker to the trigger than Quick Draw McGraw. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Hey, we don't serve their kind here. What? Your droids. Opening up our reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side in the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on the balance sheet to open link in a new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss to open the link in a new tab. Let's go to the tab up top. Close up the hamburger. And then we'll do a range change. We're going back to 2023. No! 010123. Tab 123123. Run it to refresh it. Tabbing to the right, closing up the ham boogie and doing that range change thing again. 010123, tab 123123, run it to refresh it. Back to the balance sheet. That's the report that we've been focused in on. Now we've touched on the concept of memorizing or saving customizations of reports in prior presentations. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle. Always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Now we just want to go into it in a bit more detail here. First, just note that we have the customizations that we talked about in the past in what we might call the ribbon up top, as well as in the customization button here. Once we have those customizations, we might want to memorize it which we can do with the save customization. I don't know why they changed the terminology in the desktop version. I think it was you memorize the report and then you save memorization. I think that rolls off the tongue for me a little bit more than save customization, but maybe that's just what I'm used to. I don't know, but basically it's the same kind of thing here. So once we have that concept down, then we might wanna think about how can we use that most efficiently. So one way you might think about doing that is to say, I'm going to make internal reports possibly for my use and then external reports that I can then give to my clients or supervisors, for example. And, uh, and you might think about that as your saving format. So then the question would be, how could I be grouping my information together to then provide it to a client or a supervisor, for example? Well, one way that you could do it is that you can do your customizations of the reports. We can print each of the reports out, possibly if we give it to someone in paper, we can email it to them. But if I use this email button, we're typically emailing one at a time. We can then export it to a PDF if we want to. And in the PDF folder, we can actually group all of our reports together. So at least we're giving them a zipped file as an email, if we're gonna use basically an email, or we can put that zipped file on a cloud drive, possibly, that they can get access and give them access, something like a Dropbox or like a, a Google Cloud or a, a OneDrive type of situation. 
So those are some ways that we might provide it. It would be nice if we had at least like a zipped folder if we're going to be emailing or something like that so that we can organize uh, the forms. Uh, so the other way we can possibly do it is if I go to this first tab, well, the other way we can do it here is we can then take all of our reports and export them to Excel and we could allow the, the user, then we could try to put all the reports on one, uh, one workbook and then they would have one workbook. But usually we don't want to give someone an, an end use of Excel, but we might use Excel to then print all of those reports we put in Excel into one PDF file. So that's a tool that we'll look at in the future as well. And uh, then if we go internally, if I go to the tab to the left and I go into my customized reports, this is where the customized reports will be. And then next time we'll take a look at the management reports. So this is where QuickBooks gives a, a pretty simple but nice a uh, little uh, little layout so that we can add our reports in here to give it more of a of a basically look and feel of professionalism adding a title page and whatnot and then allowing us to print the reports out on basically one pdf file again similar to what we can do with excel so we could do it with excel we could do it uh here we can get more fancy trying to integrate like excel and word and that kind of stuff uh, as well, but those are those are basically our options. We can we can print their stuff out. We can send it to them by email. Uh, if we do, though, we probably want to zip the files first and then send them. We can put it on a cloud drive. So at that point, we can at least organize our folders nicely. Uh, uh, we can try to batch them into one PDF file using Excel and a cute PDF or some kind of PDF printer, or by using this management report tools. So if I go into this customize area, then when we give reports to like a client, we might do that periodically on a month end basis or a year end basis. So as we save our reports, we might want to group them that way. We might want to be saying these are going to be my month end reports that I'm going to consider my external reports, try to put them in order so I can easily just simply print them out and provide them to a client. We also might have internal reports that I might think are the best formatting for me internally so that when I do my bookkeeping, those are the reports that I open over here so that I can kind of verify what I'm doing from an internal standpoint. For me personally, I think the normal balance sheet is fine. That's what I use for internal purposes, but you might want to remove the pennies. You might want to have negative numbers be bracketed uh, or something like that, in which case you might want to save uh, a report to a group of internal reports versus external reports. Also, you might, if you have multiple users of a file, save the reports according to who is using the file. So if you have multiple people using QuickBooks, you could save the reports under people's names and use that as a, as a grouping uh, method so that you can have your reports under the memorized areas under uh, your name as the user of the report. So let me get, if we, if we were going to provide these reports to somebody else, I'm going to open up another tab over here. I'm going to, I'm going to tab to the left, right click and let's, well, let's just go down here. Actually, I'll just go down to the reports on the left hand side and then standard. Now the first report we might provide to someone might be, if we're just looking at balance sheet reports, might be like that summary balance sheet, right? So we might say, okay, I'm going to open up this balance sheet summary i'm going to open it up in a new tab and then i'll change the range up top closing the hamburger range change 010123 tab 123123 tab run it to refresh it and then i might do my customization with it meaning i might go to the customize up top and do my standard negative numbers bracketed red and remove the pennies and then on the header and footer I'm going to remove the date, time, and report basis. So if I run that, you could see that change here. Now, instead of doing that every time, I would then maybe save customization. So we could save the customization. It's called a summary balance sheet. That's fine. We might want to differentiate it like for an external versus an internal report, but I can also number it. I'm going to put a number one in front of it because I'm going to try to have these reports show up in order so that when I print them, I have them in the same order as I want to be presenting them. Also, if you were going to give these 
externally on a on a cloud drive or on a email with a zipped file again or even attachments they'll be ordered by the number instead of by just alphabetical order right so then i'm going to add a group so i'm going to add the group down here and say that we're going to say this is going to be uh this let's say month end reports we're going to say the idea being that these are reports that i'm going to give on a monthly basis so i'm going to save that i if i hit the drop down if i if i click in so it's a little tricky here it's not, it's not adding right there i'm going to add the new group here and then add it and then it should be in this drop down <laughs> so it's a little bit tricky there so then we're going to say uh share with so you could share it with others or possibly share your template to uh quickbooks if you've made some some changes that you think would be useful uh to other people it wouldn't give quickbooks wouldn't give your numbers to other people but the formatting that you've changed so let's go ahead and uh, save that so there we have it and if i go to the first tab then and i go into my customize uh, reports you might have to refresh the screen here because we have multiple tabs open now we have our drop down and we have the month end reports and our reports within it now if this if this if you didn't get this header to work then you then the question is how do i get the headers in there because i have no thing up top no widget to to organize the the headers well you could go back into the report itself or or into the edit here and then you can edit the name of it and you can edit the 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 add reports and you can add a new section within here if you want to as well so you can go in here and fix it so there's that and then the second one if i'm just looking at balance sheet reports might be just a standard balance sheet so now the next report if i have is the standard balance sheet i'm going to customize it so we'll customize it and then i'm going to say that we'll do our standard customization negative numbers bracketed red no pennies header and footer i'm going to remove the date the date time report basis run it so there we have this one has been changed now maybe this is the second report we want in our batch of reports that we're providing to customers at the end of the month each month right so i could say let's save customization i'm going to put this into the group of the month end reports and i'm going to name it balance sheet but i'm going to call it number two balance sheet and so then I'll save that one. Boom. And then if I go back into the first tab, refresh the page, then we should show that one popping up. And now at the end of each month, I can open each of these up one at a time because they'll be in the proper order because I numbered them and then hopefully batch them together in whatever batching that I want to be batching them in. So then if we kept going with this, if I right click, if, well, let's just do it in this tab. If I then made another one and i wanted to compare make a comparative uh balance sheet then i could go in and say well what if i wanted to do uh a, let's do let's do a quarters balance sheet so we'll do run that one and then i might might rename it uh balance sheet by quarter or something and then so there we have that and is there anything else i need to do that so that would be that one if i wanted to customize if i wanted to save the customization i could save the customization and this time i'm going to make it number three let's see if it overwrites it or if it gives me i want it to give me a new one i'm going to put it into month end reports and and so balance sheet balance sheet and this is going to be a balance sheet uh quarter end by our quarter and we'll say save it and let's see if that overrode it or if it gave me a new one if i refresh it here so it, it did what we wanted to it gave me a new one down here so now we've got both of these in here and so then the next one we might do is a comparative balance sheet possibly so maybe i go back to totals only run it and i'm going to say now let's do Let's make this the end of month, the end of the month. Uh, let's make this 120123 and then run it. And then let's do a comparison like we saw in prior presentations, previous presentation or previous period, dollar change, percent change and run it. And then I might name this one 
uh, oh, this is the summary. Well, I'll keep it in the summary. We'll say comparative balance sheet, comparative balance sheet summary. And then let's save that name if I could. And comparative balance sheet summary. And then I'm just going to say save customization. And I'll call it that. But then it's going to be number, what am I on? Four. And this is the month in report. So I'll save it again. And then I can go back on over here, refresh the page in my custom reports. So now we have, you can see the process here. So you can see how I'm getting a long list of reports just looking at one root report, that being the balance sheet. So, so the question is, what, how many comparative reports do I want? How do I want to put these comparative reports together? And then once you've got the list of reports you want, what's the order that you want to be putting them in? And then how do you want to be presenting them or providing them to a client or supervisor? Is it going to be by email? Is it going to be by a cloud drive, Google Cloud, OneDrive? Uh, is it going to be by an attachment on an email, in which case you might want to zip the file instead of having like 10 attachments uh, to the email, or you can try to use Excel and the uh, a PDF printer to put them all of these on one PDF file, which we'll talk about, or you can use your management reports over here to do a similar process, put them all on one PDF file with a with a intro page and whatnot. But the first step typically might be saving your reports and in a customized format so that you can easily implement whatever process that you want to be implementing on a period by period basis, possibly monthly. You might have a different set of reports as time passes because the first month, January, for example, you don't have as many reports you're gonna run because you don't really have comparative data of the current year. You can compare to the prior year and before the before March, you don't have any quarter by quarter data. But after you after so so the quarter each quarter, you might have different reports slightly than than each month, right? And then at year end, you might have different reports at year end that are that's going to be your largest package of reports oftentimes possibly, because now you're now you're given reports for an entire year's worth of information, a lot more comparative reports can be done at year end than on January, for example. So you might say month end reports possibly versus quarter end reports versus year end reports. Month end would be the ones that aren't landing on a quarter end and then uh, quarter end reports and then year end reports and think about what those would be, number them so that as time passes, each month and quarter and year end is really easy to, to, to format would be the general idea. Now you might also have internal reports. So for the internal reports, maybe you don't do a comparative report, but maybe you just don't like, you, you don't like the, 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 the you'd like to have the, the negative numbers bracketed or something. So then you might say, I'm gonna go back to the totals. I'm gonna remove uh, the comparative stuff here and run it. And so then, and then if I customize, maybe I still want the pennies, uh, but I want to show the negative numbers as bracketed and red. Maybe that's just the way we like to see it. Well, then we can save this one and you might want to save it as an internal report or something like that. So I could save customization and this is going to be just a balance, balance sheet for internal purposes. You might for internal or something. And then I'm going to hit the drop down and say, or I'm going to add new down here. And the new one I'm going to add is just internal reports for internal use. And then I'll add that. And then I'm not going to share it. So I'm going to save it. I'm not going to share it. Well, I'm not sharing. And then let's go ahead and refresh the screen. So now instead of me going into the normal balance sheet, I might start saying I'm not going to go into my favorites item over here, or that's not or I'm going to I'm going to get my information from this uh, internal report, right? So every time I open up my balance sheet, I can go in here and open it up because it has my nice formatting with the negative numbers being red and bracketed. 
So that's a, a general idea how you might use these, how you might organize these. You might save it by internal versus external. You want to group the reports, possibly using a numbering system in this way might help a little bit to number the reports for external use. Uh, and you might use categories based on based on users would be another way that you might use it. And how can you get these categories? Remember, there's you can't there's nothing here to make the categories. You have to make the categories basically as you create the reports and then you can edit the categories uh, going into here. I can edit the category this way. And when I create a new category, if I edit a report that's in the wrong category or something that allows me to uh, add this report to a group and I can add a new a group this way if I want to do it, a new category of uh, the saved reports. So in a future presentation, we'll then go into the management reports and think about how this works. And then we'll actually uh, print some, some of these reports out and then think about how we can export some of these reports uh, to Excel and use that method. We'll look at these different methods of saving the information so that we can actually provide it uh, to somebody in hopefully a nice and neat way.